The Democratic Labour Party is under new management. Dr. Ronnie Yearwood has been elected president and for many he is a breath of fresh air for a party in the doldrums. But there are also questions about his vision for the organization, his ability to mend deep divisions within the party and present a viable alternative to the government of the day. We sat down with the man himself to unpack these and many other issues here at the George Street Auditorium. First of all, congratulations on being elected the new president of the Democratic Labour Party. Mm, thank you. The first question that I have for you, obviously you are taking up a task that I don't think that many political hopefuls in Barbados would envy. You are attempting to lead a party at this juncture mm -hmm. um, that has been rejected by the people of Barbados, not once, but twice, and, and resoundingly so. Mm -hmm. Why? I think part of it is that we have to understand, I think, that the Democratic Labour Party is a pivotal institution in Barbados, it's social, it's political, it's economic life. And the rejection of the party on those two occasions does not signal the end or the death of the Democratic Labour Party. I think that's a premature assumption. Uh, it's one that political pundits have made. This party has a rich history, it has a rich intellect, it has people who are committed to the party, it has people who want to see this party do well, because when this party does well, Barbados does well, and I think um, the uh, Grenadian, young Grenadian um, opposition leader, Dickerson Mitchell, made that point um, at, the, um, at the extraordinary general um, uh, meeting to elect the new president. Um, so so I, I, I don't see this as an as a, as a envious or enviable challenge or task. Um, that is so daunting because I keep people, you know, I, I keep getting that question, I think, sometimes from the media, well, oh, this task is so daunting, how have you stepped into this? And, you know, the way that I see most things in life, and maybe it's because of the, the way that I've grown up and my own life story, my own origin story, is that you just face it and you deal with the challenges in front of you. This is a challenge like every other challenge in life. There are uh, Barbadians who uh, cannot put food on their table, they cannot put gas in their car. Their challenges are, are as concerning to me as the challenges that you know this party may face in its revival. And um, uh, you know, a lot of this will be focusing and trying to understand what the Barbadians want of the Democratic Labour Party uh, in the future and how do they want the party to reflect and feel and, 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 and sound like them. And, and, and that will be a lot of what we will be, uh, we will be doing going forward. To be effective in doing that, you must understand, have a good understanding of why Barbadians have rejected the party mm -hmm. on those two occasions. To what extent have you been able to identify uh, the factors that, that would have led to that? We have um, commissioned the appropriate reports and studies within the party, but those are, are strategy matters for the party. I, I don't think it's appropriate that the party does running commentary on its strategy and, and, and maybe that's something that, that's happened previously but I will say it will not happen with me. Um, you know, the, we, we have to get to recognise that this is a serious uh, unit, this is a serious outfit. The job of this party is to make itself ready for governance and to regain the trust of Barbadians so that they can put us in a position that we can be one day be their government again because the philosophy and the foundation of this party as a social democratic party is something that is important to Barbados. And, you know, we have to recognize that the party has given yeoman service to Barbados, that persons in the party have given yeoman service to Barbados. And, you know, warts and all, all political parties go through their, their difficulties. This is not the first time that a political party in Barbados has had difficulty. Um, it's not the first time that a political party in the Caribbean or indeed the world has had difficulty. But the, 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 the thing is, how do you respond to those difficulties? How do you rise to the challenges? And how do you remake yourself 
and make yourself as a party viable again um, to the people of this country and indeed to the people of the Caribbean. Because that's the other thing about the Democratic Labour Party. It has been at the centre of the formation of some of the most critical regional institutions. CARICOM boroughs there. You know, you, 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 you recognise that this party has, has given not only service to Barbadian people, but this party has been instrumental and it's been the formation, the foundation of the creation of Caribbean civilization, and that's huge. So, so we have a lot of work to do. I, I will be the last, uh, the, the first person to admit that. Um, I would not, you know, set that aside as a task that is, that, that, that is not challenging, but at the same point, there's nothing to be daunted by. It's not the first time it's happened, and we will just rise to the challenge put our heads down and work. As I've said before, grace, faith, and work. And we'll get there. I also know Dr. Yearwood, the university lecturer. Others know Dr. Ronnie Yearwood on the platform as a, you know, a politician. Mm -hmm. Who is Dr. Ronnie Yearwood, the man? What's your ideology, your mm -hmm. political philosophy? Mm -hmm. What undergirds what you do every day in this mission that you are about to embark on? There's so many facets that make up you know an individual most individuals are multi-dimensional there's ronnie the lecturer the lawyer the educator the teacher the advocate the community activist the the father the husband the son the friend They're, you know we all wear these multiple hats and we all engage in these multiple roles uh, you know if i if i had to tell my own origin story it's it's and what drives me and has always driven me in politics and, 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 and service, it is my own upbringing. It's the fact of I grew up in poverty, I grew up before running water, no electricity, uh, pit toilet, you know, these were the, the conditions of my early life. And I think they have shaped me, they have helped me to understand that my role in public life and is to serve and is to improve the lives of other people around me because when you improve one person's life chances and you provide opportunities for them they can improve the life chances of other people it is not about handouts it's about hand ups i've said that during the campaign that this is about empowering people because i've recognized that throughout my life i've been given opportunities and i've been empowered and therefore i've been able to empower other people around me and create environments that are enabling for whether it's friends family but you know that that is what it's about so me coming into public life i see government as this instrument of good there, there's so much you can do with good government and good governance you can really change and transform people's life and that's what drives me uh, in uh, in terms of my my politics in terms of my philosophy and my belief at the core of it it has to be about empowering people and in order to do that, it has to be about political engagement. It's not just about inclusion. Inclusion is important. And one of the things that I, I, I want this, the, the, the party to rediscover is its progressiveness and its inclusiveness as a big tent. But everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome in, in this Democratic Labour Party family. Um, but also, there's this new politics that I want to talk about, this new politics of engagement, where we listen to people, where we actually hear their opinions and their views. It's not just about rubbing shoulders and you know, trying to, to, to use buzzwords, but we want to really, really, really get to people uh, and engage with them, understand where they are, and then have that reflected to shape the policies and the things that are important to the party. Because the priorities of the party have to be the priorities of Barbadians. The two cannot be, cannot be able to say what is important to the party has to be also what's important to Barbadians and vice versa, that they can feed into each other so that we can represent their values. We can look uh, and sound like them and we can be them. Uh, and that's what this party has always been about and it will be about that again. The current moment, 2018, we had an economic crisis, we had an IMF program. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to 2020, there's the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. Then in 2021, another wave of the COVID pandemic. You also have ash fall, you have a freak storm, mm -hmm. you have a hurricane. Mm -hmm. And all of these are things that the government of the day would have had to deal with. I'm going back to you know, the basis upon which you have started meeting the needs of ordinary people, perhaps persons who are in a situation similar to the one that you would have mm -hmm. grown up in. What's your assessment of 
the response of the current government to those very pressing challenges? Let's even go back before 2018. You, you, know, you had the global financial crisis um, and the government then had to face those challenges. There will always be challenges um, that a government will face. There will always be hurricanes, there will always be um, economic fallout, there will always be some, some challenges. And uh, that is the job of government. That is what you're there for. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't buy into that, that, that narrative that, oh, we face all of these things. It's like, what do you think that you're there to do? That is your job. Your job uh, is to deal with the unexpected uh, respond to them in a calm, reasoned way, provide the resources that people need, and plan for the future. Um, and if you are unable to do that, then I would say you are probably not fit for a government. Um, I, I'm not here to, at this particular moment to give a running commentary or assessment of, of, of the nature of the government, to, but to say, you know, th th there has to come a point where the kind of hot and sweaty approach the government needs to stop, and you need to settle down and govern. Um, you know, th th there's a there's a there's a line between campaigning and governing, um, and I think we have to get back to the fact in Barbados that when campaigns are over, they're over, and you begin the job of government, and you focus on that. And you know, the people are your priority; they come first. You sit. Um, and you formulate your policies, you talk to them, you're informed by them in a real, real way. And I, I cannot emphasize that enough, and, and, and that's what I'm going to be trying to promote, this politics of engagement, um, not just rubbing shoulders. I, I, I just find that somewhat a little bit disparaging. You, know, you, you really need to get out there and talk to people. You're not just bypassing them in you know, a, a, a quick five-minute conversation. You want to get to the heart of what's driving them, what do they see Barbados is made of? What kind of country do they want? I think that's something that no political party um, recently, um, in, in at least the last three, four years, have done that. They've not asked the question, what kind of country do you want? It's, it's easy for politicians to spout rhetoric and you know, make these fancy plans and, and claim that the streets are paved with honey and gold and milk and everybody's okay and we're gonna we're gonna have these shiny buildings and beautiful roads and everything and it's easy to, to sell that rhetoric but then you ask the question is that the kind of society that we want do we want that kind of bright shiny Miami like or Miami light society or do we want a society that holds fast to some of the traditions? Modern, yes, we can be modern, but somehow hold into the things that make Barbados Barbados and the lifestyles that we like to live, whether that, uh, that, that have shaped us for generations. So, so that's why I said the politics engagement is important and be able to talk to people and figure out what kind of society are we trying to create and what kind of society do they want and then once we figure that out, then all the other things around that can form. So we can figure out what kind of industry, what kind of um, uh, service sectors or business sectors that we want to pay for the lifestyle and the society that we're trying to aim for. Right now, sometimes I feel we're shooting in the dark because we're not sure what kind of society we want. So we're always trying to catch about which industry is going to work. So you know, today it's one thing, tomorrow it's another thing. Next day the government's you know, you know, it's the it's the the, the government's the green economy. Then it's the blue economy. Then it's the marijuana economy. Then it's the health economy. And then you're like. What, what, what are we actually focusing on? Where, where's Barbados going? I think we have to ask those really big questions. And the only way to do that, you have to talk to Barbadians. You know, uh, have we talked to Barbadians to decide, is the blue economy something that the majority of Barbadians want to get involved in? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that the blue economy is not a credible economy, don't get me wrong, but have we asked the question? And then if they say yes, then we uh, create the training and the, and the schools and then the jobs, etc. Take, that's fine. Have we asked, is the green economy something that you want to create a society around? Have we asked the serious question about fintech or the tech economy or all the service economies or all of these things? So, so I, I, I think that's really 
really important to have those kinds of discussions. And I don't think we're having those kinds of discussions. But I think one of the things that persons usually identify as the hallmark of a good leader, especially in a country mm -hmm. like Barbados, is a leader who is decisive, one who is able to make yeah. decisions um, on behalf of the persons that they represent. Mm -hmm. Have you started at you, all to think you for, for yourself yeah. about the type of Barbados that, that of you course. envision? I, I, what is that? Of course I know the type of Barbados that I want, but it is not my job as a leader. There's a difference between decisiveness and then there's a difference between bullying. Um, and there's a difference between thinking that you have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I'm not going to tell everybody that I have all the answers, that I know everything. But then if, if I did have all the answers and if I had a, knew everything, why would I have a team? You know, you could just run it by yourself, but you can't. And there's no point pretending that you can. That's why you have teams. That's why you have cabinets. That's why you have structures and parliaments. And that's why you have political parties and policy units and universities. Because you can listen, you can bring people in, you can take them into your confidence, you can trust their views, you can trust their research, you trust their intellect. And then obviously, as the leader, you have to make the decision. You have to act, of course. There's, there, there's no, there's no um, that doesn't make you not decisive, but what it makes you is makes you someone who is open and who actually believes in participatory democracy and who's gonna give it a real genuine try. And I think that's the kind of leadership, that's the kind of politics that, that we need to give a try in this country. Um, too, too often we have these um, uh, mythical and, and sometimes very incorrect concepts of these you know, strong leaders or these, these one man. Yeah, that, 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 that. I think that's a lot of folly. That is, especially in a modern era where we have provided so much money, we spend half a billion dollars on education, uh, and then you're gonna look you know, what is it? Look at big men and women and not value their opinions or not value their input after you be paid so much uh, for education. That does that just does not add up. Um, so I think you can have the, the decisiveness that is required of the leader, but you can also still be a leader who will listen to people and gather their opinions. And that's the kind of leader that I I, I style myself as. No, you mentioned the importance of a team and being able to listen to your team and rely on your team. There is a perception that your team, being the Democratic Labour Party, is somewhat divided. That there are factions within the Democratic Labour Party, a Ronnie Yearwood faction, a Verna de Pisa faction, uh, a, a Dr. David Eswick faction. Are there factions within the, the Democratic Labour Party? Is the Democratic Labour Party divided? And how do you intend, if that is so, to, to reconcile uh, the, the party? I guess, I guess I can answer a question with a question. I'll literally tell you in school never to do that. And I always tell my students to do that. But are there factions within the Barbados Labour Party? I am not a member of the Barbados <laughs> Labour Party. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's a fair question. The, the reality is political parties are big tents. They have competing interests and again sometimes it's the narrative and the way people frame things. There is nothing wrong in a political party with having different interests. Different people will want different priorities. Someone may say we should be doing priority A. Someone says no no it's B, it's C. The point of the leadership and what a good leader is able to do is able to reconcile and triangulate those priorities and still focus on the end goal of the political party. Every single political party will have varying and competing interests. That is normal. Um, the, the, what, what may become problematic is if those uh, competing interests get to a point where it affects the normal day-to-day -day functioning of the institution. Um, so so the, the short answer to that is that there are different interests in the party. I, that, it, would be, it would be silly to, to deny that. Um, uh, is that affecting the unity of the party? I think the answer would be no. Um, and it's how, as a leader, I will manage um, uh, the different and varying interests that you have in the party uh, that will be important. And you have that in every single institution, whether it's corporate institutions, whether it's civil society institutions, whether it's uh, parties here, whether it's parties overseas, whether it's even the ruling party. But it's about how you manage um, these varied interests so that you can still achieve uh, your goal. Um, and, and I see myself as someone who is a unifier, 
who is able to um, you know reach across all varying interests and and understand that you know people may may want um, a particular thing or maybe trying to um, achieve a particular aim and someone is trying to achieve a particular aim both of them love uh, the party both of them want the party to succeed now then how as leader do I bring um, uh, those those varying interests together and make them work on behalf of the party? And that 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 will be my role. Well, one of the the other criticisms um, of Dr. Ronnie Yearwood as president of the Demo of the Democratic Labour Party is this perception that your roots within the party are not that deep, mm -hmm. and that has been identified as one of the challenges which you might face in, in attempting to unify the party, how do you respond to that? I, I don't even know if those kinds of things require responses because I just won the election. I, I don't think that I could have won the election if I didn't have a, 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 a sense of grounding in this party, an understanding of this party, um, and a, a respect and love for the people of this party and and the same has been shown to me um, so so I, I I'm not sure that those kinds of, of statements even require require responses you know the, the the reality is that we have had an election the elections are over it is now time to get on to the business of managing the affairs of this party for the interests of Barbadians you, you are a young father I don't think that mm -hmm. That you know, <laughs> that's that anybody that that's a secret. I mean, you have been on the campaign with your family. Mm -hmm. You brought your family along mm -hmm. for the journey. Mm -hmm. um, you are a lecturer at the University of the West Indies, mm -hmm. and then here at George Street, mm -hmm. you have a, a big task ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Do you have to sacrifice, or will do you foresee yourself having to sacrifice um, at least one of those responsibilities? Um, as you seek to bring the party back to, to where you want it to be? No, I don't. I, I, I think those are all the roles that daily so many people play. So many people play the role of father, and, and being a father, I think, is such an important, it's probably one, if not top of my jobs. And, you know, if, you, if you're taking the order, it's, it's um, God, husband, um, father. And then you you go down you go down the road you go down the line. Um, so being a father is very very important to me, um, and it is something that should be important to all fathers out there. And it's not a matter of sacrificing fatherhood or being a good father to success in your career. I think you can have you can have it all um, as long as you have a good supportive network. You have a a good partner. Um, and you have friends around you as well. Um, you know, it, this is not a one-person journey. Um, being leader of this party is not a one-man job. There, there's a team, there's, there's people around me that will support me. Um, you know, being a, a father is not a, a one-man job. I have my wife, you know, I have my mother. Um, you know, there, there, there's a whole network and these things are, are doable and we have to encourage young professionals to come into politics and not feel that they're going to be losing their family life in order to have a political or public life. I think you can have both. And I hope that I'm able to show that you can have both of them without one necessarily having to sacrifice the other. And it means maybe that the nature of politics is changing. Because if you can get people with young families, because the reality is they were able to understand a lot of the policies uh, that we ourselves have to have to implement. You know, there's some things, to be honest, that I don't think I've, I thought about clearly from a policy position until I had a kid. Um, and I'll, yeah, there was registering my son, and I'm thinking, are there enough nursery places? Not that you don't consider these things, but when it, when it becomes a real issue for you, you're like, oh, nursery places. That, 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 that's a thing. Or then the school run will become a thing. So then you're like, okay, this is going to affect productivity. You know, obviously you always understand these things, you talk about them, but when you're living them out, then you have to think, you know, how, if I, if I was in charge from a policy perspective, I'm a dad, um, how do I have and create a society that allows fathers to be able to have more time with their families, but still be able to do their jobs, so you have a good work-life balance, even paternity leave. 
that 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 was something that I that came from. I was like, you know what? I didn't have, I didn't get, you know, paternity leave. I had to balance everything. And you, and you think, is that right? You know, things that you never, as I said, things in the abstract that you were thought about. But when you're when you're actually having to deal with them, then you're like, you know, do we have a policy on this? Has anyone thought about this? Um, so 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 then your sometimes your policy positions and things shift because your life experiences are shifting, um, and that's important. So, so we need a variety of persons in politics and having people with young families in politics is important because they can bring that perspective to bear on the policies and decisions that need to be made. Uh, we need to have uh, more women in politics because they bring unique perspectives to bear on the issues that affect women. So, it, you know, politics has to have that variety. It has to look like the country. Young fathers are part of Barbados. What's wrong with, you know, they need to be there. Um, women are part of Barbados. They need to be there. Um, so, so these are things that, that we have to get comfortable with, things that we have to get used to, and we have to become better as a country, uh, including variety of Barbadians um, at different stages and phases of their lives into our political culture. That period from 2008 to 2018, the Barbados Labour Party has deemed it lost decade, mm -hmm. and it has stuck. And there are persons who believe that the Democratic Labour Party as an organization still ought to apologize to people mm -hmm. in Barbados mm -hmm. for that period. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? You know, former, the former leader apologized for a number of things on a number of occasions. And I think we're past that point. Um, you know, the warts and all, I'll be the first to admit, there were missteps that were made during that period. But there were also there were also things that I think Barbadians could be proud of objectively. I think anybody looking at it objectively, you know, people create narratives and they try to throw them out, and some of them stick, some of them don't. Um, it is unfortunate that everything is seen through that lens, but that's not objectively and factually correct because you had, for example, um, a revolution in terms of the creation of. Um, nursery spaces, you had a, um, a revolution in, in terms of uh, sixth form education, you had the uh, uh, the best so Santos laboratory that is now, you know, the, 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 the center of excellence in terms of our fighting against COVID. So, you know, if, 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 if it was all, I suppose we lost again, how have these things happened? That does not mean every government, every political party, there will be things that uh, uh, missteps. Um, obviously, there may be some more than others, but there will also be things that we can look and think, okay, you know what, that worked, that didn't work. And, there, and, and the three things that I mentioned just now, there'll be more, those were part of that, that suppose we, that, that 10 years. So I, I, I don't buy into these, a lot of these narratives, and a lot of these narratives are sadly created by um, political pundits or operators from the other party and, and then sometimes you know collectively people we all buy into them and people start trading around you know it's time for that to stop you know this 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 party is on an upward trajectory this party is looking forward to the future um, you know I think my 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 winning is a signal for that it, it's all about the future it's all about how do we get that next generation of Barbadian um, young persons into politics and into leadership and trying to take charge and hold of the country and their destiny. Because the, the, the reality, and I said this on the platform, a lot of the folks making the decisions now in Barbados will not be around when the effect of those decisions start to take hold. And it's going to be my generation, your generation, we're going to be the ones who are going to have to deal with all of this. Whatever, what is happening now, we are going to have to deal with it, whether it's in our professional capacities, whether it's as fathers, whether it is, however, in all these different roles, but we're going to have to deal with it. And it's time for us to kind of step forward and step up um, and, and, and get involved in politics. And I, and I issue that appeal and that challenge 
to, to, to younger Barbadians um, in 30s and 40s and 20s to, to get involved. You know, come down to Joy Street. You know, find that everybody has a, a DLP friend. Find your, find your DLP friend and, and get a form. And even if you don't want to join, figure out how you can just contribute or you may have an idea. Feed it in. You know, we're all here to listen. Follow, find me on social media. Send me a message. Um, you know, this, this is about trying to engage with you, understand what's going on with you and then trying to shape policy uh, to reflect you and, and to reflect the kind of society that you're trying to build out. Okay. One of the other challenges that has been brought to the fore, um, especially given that there are no seats in Parliament for the Democratic Labour Party, there's no parliamentary group. Um, effectively, there's no political leader of the Democratic Labour Party, and that has been identified as a weakness. I think again, that's 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 one of those narratives that I think the media would do better than to buy into. You know, the party has a leader. It was elected. I was just elected. It, it, it's over. The elections are over. The party has a leader. The party has leadership. The party has a team. The party has committed uh, persons who believe in the ideals of this party and who will drive this party to the stage of excellence that it needs to get to in order to become that fit, fighting, election-winning machine. Because in order to become a government, that's the first step. You have to do that. Um, and that will mean trying to regain the trust of Barbadians. And the party will do that. I assure you that under my leadership, that is what this party will do. And it's as I said, it's not only about me, because it's about leading with the people around you and having them as part of the decision making making process. And you know, people may find it odd, you know, that I'm, I'm not coming out here hot and sweaty, maybe that's what they're used to, but you know, you're gonna get some use to something different. Um and, and trying to make a pronouncement on everything. Um because that that's not right. I you know, I want my 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 team and my membership to hear things sometimes first from me and not read it in the paper and go like, hey, it's not just, I didn't realize. You know, as may happen with, on the other side, people find out things in the news, that can't, that can't be right. That, that's, not, that's not how you practice a, a, a serious open democracy and a, and a serious participating politics. It can't be, it cannot be. Um, and, I, and I hope to do it differently. And I hope people can appreciate and see the efforts of what we're trying to do. It's, it's new, they may be a little bit new, and they're like, well, nobody's asked my view. And over like 100 years, he actually wants to hear my view. Yes, I want to hear your view. I really want to hear your view. I really want to understand what you are going through, what you're feeling. And then we may be able to together to find a way to address it. The final question, in your estimation, based on the task that is before you, when do you envision the Democratic Labour Party being able to come to the people of Barbados again? to say this is a viable alternative to the government of the day. This is a party that can lead Barbados from the front. I have made a point that I'm not going to discuss party strategy or provide running commentaries in public. Um, but I'm not going to put headlines and dates and, and things that, that, that we've not agreed on. Or No, that, that's not right. As I said, this party will not be finding out things uh, about itself in the papers or radio programs and no 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 that's not the way you that's not the way you build trust in an organization um uh and it's not the way you can build trust with the people of barbados because the people of barbados must come to know believe trust and understand that when i say I want to listen to them when i say I want to engage with them when i say i want them as part of this party in this process whether they become members or whether they're just supporters I actually mean it. I actually want them to be part of this because we're trying to build a new politics, a politics that empowers them, that allows them to take control of their lives and not having the government run your life for you. It's about you being given the opportunities and the resources and the space to be the best you can be and live out your life in the best way possible in a dignified way that you are choosing but supported by an environment created by the, uh, by the government. And that, that's what I'm aiming for. That was newly elected president of the Democratic Labour Party, Dr. Ronnie Yearwood. I am Kareem Smith for Barbados Today. 
Thanks for joining us.